we're here! Chippy is already taking care of everything. We're safe now. Several fire elementals crossed the river and were heading towards the mystical house. But Chippy stopped them. You told me that most elementals don't live where humans live. They shouldn't be here unless they were summoned. That's right! Something is off about this fire! Magister, someone is crying for help in the village. Let's go help them first! Chippy is at your service! You, Sam! Get these fires under control! Do not retreat! Forward! General, the Magister's condition, you see, he's forgotten you again. It's okay, Chippy. No matter how many times he forgets, I'm happy to reintroduce myself to him. I am Hogan, the former leader of the Heroic Order of the Lightbearer Empire, and the current Magistrate of Hollistone. We've been friends for decades. And our friendship will never fade, no matter how muddled your memory gets. But this is no time for small talk. Look at these fire elementals. They don't belong in Raya. How could they just appear out of nowhere? Then our most pressing concern is to put out the fire. <sighs> Please, give me a hand. Let's put these fires out together. Beauty sleep. This will cost you extra. Valen, you're just getting here now? Were you deep in your cups again? That's not fair. I ran into a bunch of fire elementals on the way here. Those guys were really annoying. Anyway, looks pretty grim here. I didn't expect the fire to be this big. This is not normal, General. That's right. We think it's arson. The culprit is like mage. Whoa, a talking hamster? 
You're a familiar, aren't you? In that case, this gentleman with the general must be a mage. I gotta say, picking a hamster as your familiar is rather... unique. I'd normally overlook your banter, Vayne. But in front of this magister, you'd better watch your words. It's rare to command such respect from the general. Well, Magister, I am Valen, of the Heroic Order. How would you like me to address you? Hmm, an interesting name. I will remember it. Forgive my rudeness earlier. I'll be sure to make it up to you once this fire has been dealt with. interested in who started the fire than in putting it out. I saw you casting a spell with my own eyes! It's not that easy to quench a greedy fire, my dear. I'm just trying to help. The Scarlet Sorceress is as beautiful as her fire is dangerous. That's what the rumors say. Dangerous? You're quite right. If this were my fire, you'd all be ashes by now. <laughs> so she's the Scarlet Sorceress. Chippy has heard of her. You're... Hmm? Magister, if Chippy is not mistaken, it seems like the Scarlet Sorceress is staring at you. What do we do, Magister? She's staring really hard. Never mind. You made me think of someone. The divination was right. This night was awful. I shouldn't have gone out. I'd appreciate not being disturbed any further. I'm leaving. You're not going anywhere, Scarlet Sorceress. All my wares are gone. I demand compensation. Don't push your luck, young man. I'm not known for my patience. Don't you dare try to get away with this! I'll make sure you're held responsible! Shh. Quiet. Something's not right. The wind. It's suddenly so loud. You awake? How are you feeling? If I hadn't seen you pass out just now, I'd probably believe you. You passed out for a while. General Hogan and his men put out the fire. Then he returned to Hollistone. He ordered me to stay here and look after you. Before he left, the General told me to make sure that when you woke up, your memory was alright. 
What a strange request. Do you often forget things? Also, how much do you remember of what just happened? The Scarlet Sorceress, Muriel. You're a Magister, so perhaps you've heard of her. She was identified as the culprit by young Master Rowan. That kid with the huge bag and the duck on his head? He's Rowan, the second son of the wealthiest man in the Empire, and head of the Mithril Consortium. General Hogan took the two of them back to Hollistone for questioning. Muriel's attitude towards you was unusual. When you passed out, she was the first to get to you. Did you know her from before? That's... rather odd. Magister? Yes! You're awake! Chippy checked all around and didn't see any elemental beings. The village is safe now! Mr. Valen told you that General Hogan already left for Hollistone, right? The General will wait for us in the village, so we should go meet him in Hollistone. He seemed to have something to say to you. There might be enemies on the road. I'll go with you. Although, you might not need my protection. Of course! The Magister is the mer... <coughs> the merriest mage that everyone loves. Anyway, since you're feeling better, Magister, should we set off? However, before leaving for Hollistone, we should probably return to the mystical house first. Dolly must be worried sick. Need a hand, friend? Dolly! I brought back the Magister! You're back. I was worried. Mr. Merlin, you seem to be in quite a bit of trouble. Shall we find you someone to lend you a helping hand? Leave it to me. I know a few people. cold all day. They say it's always autumn in Ryham, but right now, it's more like winter. It's said that Merlin's ward has long protected Ryham. It's the only reason that people can actually live here. But recently, Ryham's been getting colder. It's almost snowed the past few days. We've come with the Magistar to investigate this changing weather. My apologies, Miss Hamster. I never got your name. We should be introduced. You are Vela. I am Hammy. Are all your familiars hamsters? Nope. Chippy told me that General Hogan ordered you to protect the Magister. You must know that serving the Magister is an honor, but it's not easy. I'll be observing you. I hope you'll become a competent retainer. Apologies again, but I have to correct you. I'm a knight, not someone's retainer. Protecting him is just my current task. It's not a lifelong post. 
Unless your Magister is someone like the Great Merlin, then I may consider it. Did I hear that right? Well, the Magister, he is Mer... Ouch! Why did you just step on my foot, Hammy? Oh, sorry. Chippy likes to spout nonsense. Don't mind him, Mr. Valen. Once you spend some time together, you'll realize that although the Magister isn't Merlin, he is just as powerful. You'll see that he is practically the same as Merlin, except for the different appearance and name. Okay, I'll just wait and see. We should get going. I really want to get to Hollistone as soon as possible. I need a hot drink to help me warm up. Dura above. I really hope the General doesn't give me another assignment. So, how are you getting along with Vader? I hope he hasn't offended you already. Really? That guy's usually a handful. That's not fair, General. These two little hamsters were watching my every move. I didn't slack off at all. Keep up the good work, Mr. Valen. Yes, of course. Thanks for your encouragement, Hammy. Let me say this again, Valen. He was sent by me specifically to look into the changing weather. To ensure success, you must spare no effort in assisting him. Furthermore... You must ensure his safety. I totally understand, General. Ah. <sighs> Valen is my most trusted knight, both in strength and in character. His only shortcoming is probably his big mouth. Anyway, please teach this young man a thing or two during your time together. You can be as strict as you need to be. Stop teasing me, General. We should get down to business. The fire at Ryham was clearly arson. Yes, the young master of the Mithril Consortium identified the culprit as the Scarlet Sorceress. Rowan believes that she was the one who summoned those fire elementals. The Scarlet Sorceress, however, denies it all. As it happens, the Scarlet Sorceress did say something. Just one thing. 
but it made me think. She said that you'd exonerate her. She seemed convinced that you would find the real culprit of the fire. You and her. I don't mean to pry, but is she an acquaintance of yours? True, you have lost your memory. Some things you might not be able to recall. Don't worry. We'll get to the bottom of all of this in our investigation. Oh, right. This is your first time in Hollistone, isn't it? Before troubling yourself with the investigation, you might as well take a tour around the village. I suspect you'll like it here. Go, have a look around, then come find me. I'll be waiting for you here. Thank you for considering my lady. However, she said that if she needed anything, she would instruct us in what to do rather than trouble you. Well, she does not need to be so polite. The lady has come a long way, and it is my duty to be hospitable to guests. Should she have time today, might I be fortunate enough to meet her? I have prepared a rare gift for her. Lord Franz, sir. I'm afraid my lady is terribly busy today and really cannot see you. Please return another day. Lord Franz does not seem to be in a great mood today, I see. I heard General Hogan mention that a noblewoman lives in this house, and that she has come from the capital. And where did this bottom feeder come from? Talking about me behind my back. Be gone! Ahem. <clears throat> and nice to meet you, Lord Franz. You're different from what I imagined. I heard you were so rich and swanky that even the fountain on your estate was made of gold. I imagined you'd look like a fine gold bar. Impertinent scoundrel! No wonder your mouth emits such dross when base wretches like you grow up eating only filth. <laughs> fine, fine. I might well be a base wretch, but that can't be said of him. What do you think, Magister? Oh no. You look like you're barely half-trained. Don't call yourself a Magister when you only know a few spells. <laughs> I wager you never attended the Serene Lyceum. Am I right? Hmm. The Magister didn't really study that much there. See? I thought as much. Peasants like you don't belong in a place like that. You misunderstood, Lord Cotton Highbutt. The Magister didn't study at the Lyceum because he was teaching there. Yes! You journaled about that part of your life, and you allowed me to read those entries. What a bunch of tedious liars! Enough! I have an important client to meet and can spare no time to argue with the likes of you. Furthermore, I hate rodents, particularly when they scurry around my property. You'd best not let me catch you around Ryham. That region falls under my jurisdiction. He certainly wasn't humble. He's essentially saying that Ryham belongs to him. However, it doesn't look like he was exaggerating. Lord Franz does control most of Ryham, especially the southern part. You look a bit lost. Allow me to explain. Ryham is built along the Tranquil River, which divides the region in half, north and south. 
Two years ago, Southville heated Lord France and dug up its wheat fields to plant grapes instead. They made a lot of money, and nowadays many villagers regard him as the symbol and source of their wealth. They say it's a new grape variety, gem vine. In all of Asperia, it only grows in Raihim, and is so rare that it can't be bought anywhere else on the market. To expand production, Lord Franz has lobbied the Northville villagers to swap from growing wheat to gem vine grapes. Is this a mage's intuition then? Southville is not that far, so we could go have a look around. But we should probably talk with General Hogan before we go. He's waiting for us near the plaza. I heard that the wheat fields in Northville will soon be acquired by Lord Franz. It won't be long before Northville is growing those expensive grapes, just like Southville. What? Wasn't the village chief of Raham opposed to growing grapes? Did he back down in the end? Uh, he had no choice. You've seen how rich the people in Southville have gotten these past couple of years. It was all because of the grapes. Everyone in Northville was green with envy. Who doesn't want to be rich? The old chief couldn't hold back to see a change. Dora above. If there are grapes to the south and grapes to the north, Ryham should just change its name to Grapeville. Glad you're safe. I heard about the fire last night. I was so worried. Eddie, I saw everything. When the fire broke out, there was a mage in the village. She was standing in my wheat field. She waved her hand and just vanished. After which the field just burst into flames. What? Are you saying you saw the culprit? Mary, take a deep breath. Let's see if you can remember what she looked like. Um, she had red hair down to her mid-back. She was also wearing a hat with a long feather in it, and a black dress with gold stripes. We need to tell this to the heroic order. Magister, listening to that description, it seems like the culprit has to be Muriel. She has red hair and wears a hat and a dress. Do you remember what the Scarlet Sorceress looks like? I think she was different from the woman's description. That's right. Muriel has even longer hair. It's like a red carpet. This is an important piece of information. Before the fire, Mages other than Muriel may have been in the village. We need to tell this to General Hogan immediately. should never have been divided. Now the citizens on both sides of the river are constantly bickering. 
I have to point out that this situation started after Lord Franz arrived in Ryham. In short, the intel suggests that the culprit is probably someone other than the Scarlet Sorceress. But she's still a suspect. And who knows if the other red-headed mage is her accomplice. We'll have to keep investigating. Hmm. Huh. We haven't even solved the issue of the changing weather. But here comes more problems. This case is related to magic, which Valen does not excel at. I'm going to ask you for your help. Are you willing to aid us? I'll let her know that you said that. Thanks for your help. Have you figured out what your next move is? We ought to look around Southville. Before identifying the culprit, we should learn more about the grape variety known as Gemvine. We bumped into Lord Franz just now, and he wasn't particularly friendly. What if, hypothetically, my sword falls out of its scabbard, completely by accident, mind you, and skewers his foot? You'd protect me, right? Please keep an eye on him. I'm afraid he's going to get into trouble. Then it's all up to you. May Jura above watch over you.
you're General Hogan's friend, you both can hold it down in a fight. If you weren't in the fight, both the villagers here and my salary would have suffered. Who knows? Maybe I would have run away. Or perhaps... I would have shielded you until I fell. <laughs> I'm just joking. Let's go. We have things to do. A mage wearing a hat with a family through the sewer grates. A tattered robe he never washes, but he's always eating grapes. Ding, ding, ding! This ain't so swell! His lordship beat him and made him yell! Oh, these baskets of gem vine are the wrong weight. I told you Lord Franz is personally coming to inspect the village. I won't be able to protect you if he finds that people are secretly eating or hiding the produce. What? Lord Franz is coming himself? Who are you? Don't go asking what shouldn't be asked. Wait a minute. You're not Lord Francis' spy, are you? Yeah, 
Lord Ron's a spy wouldn't just be wandering around the village doing nothing. With everything that's been happening recently, can't you just be good and stay in the village? No! Malcolm said the lake's frozen over. I have to go see it. You may not care, Grandpa, but I've never seen a frozen lake. You don't understand anything. That just means it's cold. And what's so good about that? Those Northfield folks refuse to listen to Lord Franz's advice. And even Merlin's magic can't protect them anymore. I forbid you from going to Northville.
And this beautiful field is the work of Archmage Merlin. He once cast a protective spell here, so our crops thrived. So, this place is under Merlin's protection? Cold, dark, empty. This place doesn't feel right. This can't be Merlin's magic. And you are? I'm Cassidy, a simple mage. Hmm. Help! Someone help me! These robots are crazy! Oh, thank goodness. If you hadn't saved me, I'd already be digesting in their bellies. Let me introduce myself. My name is Lorson. Hang on, Lorson. Are you saying they were about to eat you? Absolutely. They were even sharpening their knives. You clearly only fit one of their criteria, Lorson. Hmm, there has to be a reason for their abnormal behavior. How about we show some concern for the innocent little rabbit here? After such a long journey, I haven't even had a drink. Hang on, look at all the grapes here. A few of these would do. Hold it right there! Mm, mm. Oh, they're so sweet! These are amazing! Oh, something's not right! My stomach! It hurts! Oh, it's bad! Help me! Is he... still alive? Oh... Well, you tell me. Is this poor bunny gonna live? He's in fair condition. But most likely some type of poison. Initial symptom was fainting. His complexion is presently rosy. Such a quick reaction. Are you sure it's not fake? Unconfirmed. Could be related to your constitution. This requires further study. We need to investigate this more closely. Please, sir, could you give us a bunch as a research specimen? Not a chance! Lord Franz, why don't you eat a bunch right here and prove it's okay? Ridiculous. I'm under no obligation to prove anything to you. Lord Franz, I swear it's just for research. Once we have the results, I'll make a special mention of you in my thesis. Someone, get these gibbering lunatics out of my sight! <laughs> Don't try to escape. Strange. Something's not right. Ah, 
Young Master Rowan, I'm sorry for letting these louts disturb you. I'll make them pay. I'm not talking about them. I think these people from Southville, I've seen them somewhere before. How could that be? Well, I'm sure you're just a little confused because you were scared. Well, you uncivilized rabble, you will pay for this. Everyone, please come here. Abra! Kadabra! We've arrived! How are you all? F fine! Uh, just dizzy and. Uh... <coughs> 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 Only vomit? And it's fine? Hmm. Lady Mage, are you saying you've seen worse? Actually, teleportation magic isn't my strong suit. It needs precise positioning, but I don't really know my way around here, so sometimes there may be small errors. Um, if I may be so bold, these small errors... Errors you mentioned don't include death or decapitation, do they? Oh, nothing that serious. I've repeatedly verified that at most a limb or an internal organ may be lost, but it's all easily fixed if promptly dealt with. Please tell us about this sort of thing in advance next time. Hopefully there won't be a next time. Magister, I bet you know just the thing to treat the side effects of teleportation magic. Don't you? There are lots of herbs nearby. They can be made into medicine that can make everyone feel better. Just leave the others to me, Magister. I'll keep an eye on them while you go gather the herbs. brewed magical potion courtesy of the Magister. Drink up and you'll be cured! Oh, that's awful! My tongue is numb for some reason. This is the first time I've ever encountered this kind of potion. You truly are amazing, Magister. There are so many formulas, recipes, and spells to learn out here in the world. I knew it was the right decision to leave the Lyceum and follow in the footsteps of the great Merlin. You're following in Merlin's footsteps, you say? <gasps> Miss Cassidy, did you by any chance come to Ryhev just to study Merlin's ward? That is correct, Hammy. I've been researching Merlin's spells and methods for some time now. I heard that Merlin once created a ward so powerful that he was able to make Ryham, which was once barren, into a bountiful haven for its people. I came here with the express purpose of locating and studying this magical ward. His magic can only be described as a work of art. Every spell is meticulous, seamless, and perfect in every way. Yes, yes, yes! I totally agree! Really? I'm so glad to meet a familiar with such discerning taste, Hammy. You as well, Magister. As a scholarly maid yourself, surely you must understand my enthusiasm. I see. I suppose there are those who refuse to acknowledge the greatness of Merlin. Mages who are indifferent to his extraordinary achievements. I simply have nothing to say to them. Oh, apologies. Did I come off as too excited just now? It's just that Merlin has always been my guiding star since I started studying magic. 
a mentor whom I've never met. In any case, I'm certain that my understanding of magic will reach even greater heights once I get the chance to analyze his ward. However, there's something strange about the magic in the land surrounding Southville. Something really discomforting. Merlin's magic usually feels so warm and pure. It's nothing like the magic in these parts. Which is why I've decided to head north and investigate. It was nice meeting you all today. I must be leaving now, but I hope we will meet again someday. Should we also go north and look around? We were all in a hurry earlier because of the fire. We might have missed something. Wait, everyone! Wait for me! The Gruglins are even more erratic than usual. Could these graves be the reason? can send these creatures into such a frenzy. From my understanding, most of these grapes are purchased by the Adamant Syndicate. Adamant Syndicate, yes. I heard about them in the capital. A merchant guild that grew quite powerful recently. Yes, the Adamant Syndicate is a famous merchant guild in Asperia. They've been looking to surpass us and establish a monopoly. In the past, the Mithril Consortium hardly took notice of them. But now... They're almost on even footing with us. It pains me to say it, but I must admit that they are extremely talented when it comes to doing business. I, however, have no interest in these grapes, as only the nobility can afford them. I only care about the wheat production in Northville. When the wheat is ground into flour and baked into bread, its deliciousness has the potential to reach every single home in Asperia. But with the weather growing colder by the day, there's no telling what will become of Ryham. It's possible that this year's harvest, however poor, was the final gift these lands had to offer. No way! We're gonna put a stop to this crazy weather and bring the warmth back to Ryham. That's right! And we'll start by finding the real culprit. Chippy won't forgive anyone who burns down the fields that Magister Merlin works so hard to protect. You two are awfully spirited today. We heard what the furballs had to say. What do you think? Though I suppose anyone would be upset after seeing the destruction of something they once protected. Relax. Forget I said anything. Can you youngsters be a little more low-key? I remember your faces. You were there when we were putting out the fires. You're back here to investigate what happened, right? I may be old and forgetful, but I assure you that the people you're describing don't live in Northville. Come to 
think of it. I think Hank saw some outsiders around in the wheat fields that evening, but I'm not sure if those are the people you're looking for. Hank is the only fisherman around these parts. He's got no interest in farming, so he spends his days fishing. If you want to talk to him, keep heading north and you'll find him up at the lake. Poor Hank's been really worried lately ever since this cold weather froze the lake over. I don't know the details. You'll have to ask Hank. Magister, you absolutely have to try this. I've never had tastier bread in my life. The taste, the texture, the aroma, everything about it is perfect. Not even magic could make something this delicious. <laughs> Take as much as you'd like. My name is Truman, and I'm the Chief of Ryum. Consider this a welcome, my travel-weary friends. We're very grateful for the bread, Chief Truman. I can only imagine the complexity of the recipe required to make something this amazing. If you don't mind, could you share the exact formula with me? I need the flour-to-water ratio, proper kneading techniques, and the exact... Baking time. You're getting ahead of yourself, young lady. This bread doesn't need a special recipe. The special taste comes from the wheat itself. Many years ago, the legendary mage Merlin saved Ryum from the clutches of bloodthirsty monsters. A powerful spell was cast, and the weather became as warm as autumn all year round. But I don't sense any trace of magic in the bread at all. <laughs> That's because there are none in there. All Magister Merlin did was extend the comfortable season of autumn in these parts. These loaves of bread are the results of the hard work of our farmer and the gratitude we have for the great Merlin. But those things wouldn't affect the taste. I understand this. Where I come from, nature responds to the hearts of the people. The breeze we hear when we greet and embrace our loved ones is different from the breeze we hear when we say goodbye. Ha! I don't understand what you're saying, young man, but I still remember the words Merlin said to me that day. He loved the sight of the autumn wind blowing through the waves of grain. He hoped it would never fade. That's my role model. Words of poetry to my ears. Really? Before Lord Franz did away with Southville's wheat fields, this place was even more brilliant and beautiful. If you had seen it, you would know why Merlin was so moved by the beautiful land around here. Unfortunately, Lord Franz took it upon himself to replace all of Southville's wheat fields with grapes. With the little time I have left in this world, I wonder if I'll see those golden fields ever again. These loaves of bread are the embodiment of Magister Merlin's compassion and the hard work and gratitude of the village. I won't forgive anyone who tries to destroy that. Please let me do something to help the place that Magister Merlin once protected.
Why do people keep looking for me? Before the fire? I have no idea what you're talking about. If you're here to interrogate me, just save your breath. Lord Franz didn't send you. Then that's all the more reason for me not to say anything. I've already been paid, so don't expect me to say anything. Huh. I probably shouldn't have said that. I'll split a portion of my take if you promise not to tell Lord Franz. Instead of pestering me here, why don't you go look around where the fire happened? If you find something, Lord Franz might even reward you. What happened? Who's that? You were talking to him for a long time. A fisherman. He knows something, but he doesn't want to talk. By the way, is it snowing right now? Oh no. At this rate, the evidence may be covered in snow before we find anything. Do you think he knew you were investigating and is purposefully interfering? If so, someone else may have discovered your true identity. Along with the fire, it's possible that the falling snow was also part of their plan. What are you whispering about? Hey, keep those bunny ears out of our conversation. We don't have much time. You see, before you all arrived, I conducted an experiment here. And the results were completely beyond my expectations. In my experiment, I discovered... Weakening? Yes. Not only that, I discovered that another maid attempted to restore the ward, but could not stop it from weakening. No, no, no! How could this be? Sir Chippy, as a member of the Lyceum, I would never report something unless I was sure. But how is that possible? No one's ever been able to dispel Merlin's magic. As an ardent student of magic and all of Merlin's works, I am also in total disbelief. However, I can assure you that I am telling the truth. Brazen hot magic. I wonder... I was thinking the same thing. I'm no mind reader. Some things can be reasoned out. Also, after spending this much time together, I can guess what you're thinking. Tell us, Phelan. Who do you think tried to restore Merlin's ward? Muriel. The Scarlet Sorceress. After being accused of starting the fire, she refused to explain why she was there. There must be something stopping her from telling us. If she was trying to repair the ward, she probably didn't want everyone to know that it was weakening. Hmm. I have no idea what any of you are talking about. Chippy doesn't know either. Strange weather, the fire, the grapes... And now someone is trying to fix Merlin's ward. Oh no! Chippy's brain hurts! Chippy can't figure this out! Haven't you guys ever untangled a ball of yarn? The most important step is finding the end of the thread first. Things may seem like they're getting more complicated. But doesn't this just prove that we've gathered lots of clues? I have a feeling that everything will fall into place once we find the real culprit behind the fire. 
Then what are we still waiting for? Let's hurry over to the scene of the fire and investigate. It looks like our hard work is starting to pay off. We're all thinking the same thing, right? This fire had nothing to do with magic or with any mage. Although fire elementals did appear, it was after the fire started. The fire may have attracted them. Someone else sparked the fire before they showed up. The real culprits were those people we saw in Southville before, Lord Francis' henchmen. Disguised as locals, they infiltrated the village and set fire to the wheat. The villagers already had a poor harvest due to the cold weather. If Lord Franz burned that wheat, then what are the villagers supposed to sell? That's their only source of income. While everything is pointing to Lord Franz right now, I think it's still too early to confront him. What we need to do is learn more about those weird grapes. I've made a preliminary analysis regarding this, if everyone will listen. The magic that surrounds Northville is as clear and pure as spring water, while the magic in Southville, on the other hand, is as thick and muddy as a swamp. The biggest difference between the two is their crops. I suspect that those grapes are responsible for polluting the magic in that area. To test my hypothesis, I'd like to return to Southville to gather some samples. How are you going to do that when Lord Franz is guarding those grapes so closely? Unless... Miss Cassidy, don't tell me you plan on stealing some. It's not stealing if it's for research purposes. Besides, I'm only doing this to get closer to the truth. I only need a single tiny grape. No one will ever know it's missing. Then I'll take my leave. May Dura protect you. Muriel is still being held captive by General Hogan. I need to return to Hollistone and clear her of any wrongdoing. But more importantly, I need to apologize to her in person. Lord Franz was the real culprit all along. And I am partly to blame for all of the suffering she has endured. General Hogan will want to know more about what's happening here. I need to make a trip back to Hollistone as well. Lord Franz will never admit to starting the fire. He holds a lot of power around here. Getting him to confess is something that needs to be discussed with the general. Thanks for the hard work. I'll treat you to whatever you want back in Hollistone. And don't worry, it'll be on the General's dime.
So Lord Franz was behind the fire. From behind the scenes, he's been using his wealth to make his puppets do his bidding. That's exactly what I was afraid of. Unfortunately, there's not enough evidence to charge Lord Franz. Even if we bring witnesses to testify against him, all he has to do is feign ignorance and render our accusations meaningless. We need more conclusive proof, something that even he won't be able to deny. Before that, let me bring Miss Muriel here first. Now that we know she's not the culprit, she shouldn't be locked up. She got blamed for this. She deserves to know the truth. Oh my. This is quite the crowd. Um, I know you don't want to see me right now, Miss Muriel. But I would like to apologize for unjustly accusing you earlier. You see, all of this is... It's fine. No apologies needed. If anything, I should thank you. If it wasn't for you, he wouldn't be running around for my sake. Isn't that right? <laughs> I knew it. I know you have questions, but let's meet elsewhere to talk. The gardens to the northwest, maybe. <sighs> My favorite flowers grow there. And do remember to come alone. Just the two of us. Think of it like a... Date. Did she just say date? Yummy. what's a date? What? Don't ask something silly like that, Chippy. Uh um we should return to the heroic order, Valen. You had something important to report, didn't you? Hmm? Not really. Hey, General! Why are you dragging me away? Wow, it seems like something interesting is happening. You came. You look like you have hundreds of questions to ask me. Just ask. I'm in a good mood. You might even get some answers this time. The ward. So even you're saying it's a ward. It seems you've completely forgotten about the past. From what I understand, this is no mere ward. I once promised a person long ago that no matter who asked, I would never divulge the truth about this. It's something very important. I can say no more. All I can say is that someone is interfering with it. Sadly, I tried, but I couldn't stop it. All I can say is that someone is interfering with it. Sadly, I tried, but I couldn't stop it. I'm not sure. The culprits covered their tracks, and I couldn't find any clues. I can't answer that right now. You've asked enough questions. Now, it's my turn. What do you think about the location of our date? Well, I'm rather fond of this spot. See these blue flowers? Someone once told me that I'm just like them. You guess. If you're right, I'll give you a prize. Hmm... 
I wonder. Don't look at me like that. I never said I would tell you if you were right or wrong. You'll know if you guessed right next time we meet. And trust me, there will be a next time. Sometime soon, I'm sure. In any case, my lady is tending to important business. You may take your leave now, Lord Franz. Uh, wait, wait! Uh, tell me what you want. I'll give you anything. Just let me see Lady Vala. Uh, please excuse me. I have to leave to attend some other matters. Hmm. Huh. Damn that woman. There are some things money can't buy. It seems you're still having trouble understanding that, Lord Franz. Oh, you lot again. Such an unseemly group of people. Like diseased rats spreading their plague everywhere they go. It seems like you're the one being treated like a pest. She wouldn't even see you. Silence, you vermin. Guards! Lady Vala, it's been quite difficult to get a meeting with you, my lady. Oh, you've got some nerve, Lord Franz. Is this how you respond when someone has no time to meet with you? By picking quarrels at their doorstep. Oh, you misunderstand, my lady. These miscreants were the ones who started the fight, not I. My noble lady. Your eyes are as clear and brilliant as the stars in the night sky. Surely you can see through the lies this man is telling you. I care little for your petty squabbles. If you wish to continue this farce, I demand that you do it elsewhere. If even one of my flowers gets stepped on, you will all suffer my wrath. Please don't be upset, my lady. It breaks my heart to see a frown on a face as beautiful and flawless as yours. I beg your pardon, sir. While you do not wear the armor of the heroic order, am I right to presume that you are a member of the solitaries? Um, why is someone like you getting involved in petty disputes such as this? What do you mean, my lady? Spying, secrets, gossip-mongering. The solitaries are known to be masters of deception. The heroic order are the swords and shields of the nobility. How can one be unaware of those who serve them? Then it is I who have taken the liberty. <laughs> there. Now you sound much more like a solitary. Hey, Magister! Even though that lady was talking to Valen, why does it feel like she's been staring at you all this time? I totally agree! Oh, she finally looked away! Her stare is so sharp, like a dagger. Chippy's heart almost jumped out of his chest. Now then, Lord France, what could be so urgent that you would disturb me like this? My lady, I merely wish to extend an invitation to the Golden Banquet. This year's harvest of the gem vine was quite good. I will host a banquet in celebration. I would like to invite you to come. I see. Now, if that is all, I'd like to go get some rest. I wish you all a pleasant day and safe travels. Have you been following me? 
Why do you ask? Does the idea frighten you? There are only two kinds of people who receive this kind of special treatment from the heroic order. The first are important figures like him over here. The second are greedy, no-good criminals like you. Ha ha ha! You claim this man is a person of import. With neither wealth nor title, what makes him any different from the rest of the common rabble? You bonehead! Do you know who you're talking to? The person standing in front of you is none other than the great and mighty Merlin... Chippy! Stop covering my mouth! Just calm down, Hammy. How can I calm down when someone insults the Magister like that? Summoning a couple of talking hairballs? All mages are mad. Every last one of you. You seem to have some experience with mages, Lord Franz. Did you hear that a mage summoned fire elementals in Ryham on the night of the fire? Huh. Insinuate all you want. It'll give you a chance to use that crusty brain of yours. Don't overestimate yourselves. Making an enemy out of me is the worst thing you can do. That man's arrogance knows no bounds. He's been exposed, and yet he acts like nothing has happened. What's this golden banquet that he mentioned just now? He's throwing a feast, just to celebrate the harvest. Didn't hear about that. Lord Franz's manor is like a fortress, and he's never been one to have guests. So why would he suddenly want to throw a banquet now? My thoughts exactly. Something doesn't add up. If we attend the banquet, we might find some new clues. Did you see that gold invitation he gave to the lady? Where can we get ourselves one? I think I may know someone who can do that for us. Yes, that young man could be our ticket in. We should go see him at the Mithril Consortium. Have you finished speaking to Miss Muriel? I truly hope she can find it in her heart to forgive me. Wonderful! We have a saying in our family. On the road, everyone is a customer. The Mithril Consortium cannot afford to lose such a customer all because of my personal failures. You only talk in business terms, don't you? Anyway... Did you happen to receive a gold invitation from Lord Franz recently? Do you mean this? It just arrived. I didn't get the chance to open it yet. Excellent. Thanks to our friend here, we have a chance of getting into the manor now. Although my orders are to protect him, for the sake of our investigation, I will serve as your personal guard for a time. Wait, wait, wait. What are you talking about? All of Lord Franz's invitations bear a single person's name, meaning only that person is invited to attend. Even as a member of the Mithril Consortium, I have no way of bringing a guest with me, especially not an entire group of people. That crafty old man. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to forge invitations for everyone right now. F-forge? What? Did you think that the Heroic Order was above using tricks like that? However, like I said, we don't have the time. I was thinking the same thing. Then let us go together. If anything should happen, I could provide some cover. I won't say no to any help you can provide, but don't expect us to pay you back or anything. How could I? I just want to help. Besides... This isn't enough to repay you for what you've done for me. He sure knows how to butter people up. Now that we've decided on a plan, let's start getting ready. Once we're ready, we'll leave immediately.
apologize for my tardiness. Is everyone all right? That Gruglin just now looked especially tough. It definitely gave us a challenge. I'm happy to see you again, miss. Did you finish your investigation? Yes, and I wanted to share my findings with everyone as soon as possible. Judging from your expression, things must be even worse than we thought. I wanted to research gemfine grapes to explain the differing flows of magic in the north and south of Ryham. However, I uncovered the secret of the grapes themselves. I am sure you know, Magister, that these grapes confuse one's mind. They also affect hypophenes. I can personally attest to that, but why? Because gemvine grapes are anything but ordinary. They may look like fruit, but they've been heavily augmented by magic. Every single grape contains powerful hypogean magic, which attacks the mind as soon as it is consumed. If my analysis is correct, then with a little refining, these grapes can be used to control other people's minds. And because they're grapes, they can still be used to make things like juice and tarts, making them even harder to detect. Could all of this have something to do with the Dark Mages? Dark Mages? I've heard of them before. A group of lawless fanatics who study forbidden magic. But Lord Franz doesn't look like he can use magic at all. It's possible that Lord Franz is working with the Dark Mages. We need to hurry. Lord Franz is most likely going to target the nobles attending his banquet. We'll be in even more trouble if he manages to take control of them. Hey there! You look tired! Do you need some help? Who the heck are you? This place ain't safe, you know. Get out of here already! I am Rowan of the Mithril Consortium. I am here to attend the Golden Banquet. This is my invitation from Lord Franz. I don't care if you're the Crown Prince of Asperia. No one's allowed around these parts. We don't have time to play with a bunch of twerps like you. Now scram! Is that any way to treat a guest? I'll be sure to tell your employer all about this. By all means, go ahead and remind him to pay us our wages while you're at it. These grugglings here just won't leave. No one in their right mind should be doing this job. You. It's time to leave, Princeling. This way's blocked off. Go play somewhere else. Guards. We'll have to find another way in. You noticed it too, right, Magister? On top of all the guards, there's also a magical barrier protecting this place. Which means Lord Franz is working with mages. Could there be another way to get in from the back of the manor? Yeah, maybe around the back. I'm fairly familiar with the surrounding area, and there's only one way in. Wait, I can hear people speaking underground. Hmm, it's coming from below us. Could there be underground dwellers here too? Wait, I just remembered. Lord Franz was boasting about some kind of secret passage he had installed in his manor. An escape tunnel of sorts. Nobles do tend to build hidden passages like this in their homes. I have one as well. Ah, 
I wouldn't know anything about that, since I'm not a noble. What can you hear down there, bunny ears? Mm. Oh, it's no use. The barrier is preventing me from hearing anything. Looks like I'll need the wind to help me with this. The wind? How's that going to help you? Did I forget to mention it? Aside from my excellent hearing, I'm also a wind whisperer. A wind whisperer? I've heard of them. Only a small number of forest dwellers can command that kind of power. It's just as the name implies. Wind whisperers are capable of using the wind to communicate. You really are a learned individual, Miss Cassidy. Yes, with this power, I can ask the winds to guide us through our current predicament. Our limited resources, the ritual won't be entirely precise. Everything depends on this next part. I need to focus on gathering spiritual energy next. There are a number of magical disturbances nearby. Please help Miss Cassidy get rid of them, so I can focus without interruption. As for guiding the magic, I'll leave that to you. This magic ritual requires a certain medium in order to commune with nature. Once it's ready, nature will point me in the right direction. Please place the bay twigs in the three correct locations, so that I can establish a link with nature. Lord of the winds, so wild and free, I stand before you, as you can see. I hear your breath. I feel your grace. Let me fall into your boundless embrace. May the dust fly in the wind's gentle breeze and whisper my prayers to you with ease. I am Lawson, yearning for your aid in all, in anticipation of your guiding call. So this is wind whispering, magic that directly communicates with nature. Is this magic rare? Yes, only those born with certain innate abilities are capable of harnessing it. I could spend my whole life studying this type of magic and never be able to use it. That's selective, even by magical standards. Found it. There's a hidden cave somewhere at the foot of the mountains to the northeast. The entrance to Lord Francis' secret passage is hidden in that cave. There are only a few guards there. This could be our chance. The wind is unpredictable and can shift at a moment's notice. We need to hurry before anything changes. Those two guards. Don't their helmets look a little different from the others we've seen? They don't appear to be Lord Francis' henchmen, or even the mercenaries he hired. It's the Adamant Syndicate! There's no mistaking it. I recognize the insignia. That's the mark of the Adamant Syndicate. Since the hidden passage is in that cave, it must mean that they're helping Lord Franz guard it, right? Guess it doesn't matter. We could just beat the answers out of them. Wait, did you forget we're trying to sneak in? A big fight will only draw unnecessary attention. Everyone stay calm. We've got to play it safe. I have a plan. 
I was only joking, Lorson. No need to get so riled up. I know we can't use force to sneak in, which means we have to find a way to distract them. Sounds like a job for me. I'll do my best to draw their attention, while the rest of you slip into the secret passage. Hold it right there, kid. Leave the dangerous stuff to me. Did you forget, Mr. Valen? I'm the only one here with a gold invitation. They wouldn't dare to do anything to me. Besides, I agreed to come along in order to repay you for all you've done. So don't worry. I'm not only lucky in business. Lady Luck always smiles at me when I need it the most. Greetings. Um, I seem to be lost. Could you please point me toward Lord Franz's manor? I've come to attend the Golden Banquet. I have the invitation right here. Beat it, kid, and get that paper out of my face. Wait, could it be that you too are lost as well? Or are you unaware of the grand feast that Lord Franz is hosting at his manor tonight? You ask too many questions, kid. Now get lost! Oh, I meant no offense. I just wanted to ask for directions. I told you to get lost, Squirt. If you're not gone in the next three seconds, I'm gonna beat some sense into you. <laughs> I looked everywhere for you. I can't huh? believe you were hiding huh? here all along. So, are you surprised to see me? P -p Peggy? Hey, is that any way to greet your fiance? You've been dodging me at every turn. I even lost my ring because I've been chasing after you for so long. It's probably somewhere by the beach east of here. What are you two just standing around here for? Hurry up and help me find it! You mean us? Why should we listen to you? How dare you talk to Princess Peggy that way! Princess? You want to know why you should help me? Because I'm in a good mood today. Whoever finds that ring gets to keep it. The ruby on that ring is worth more than Lord Francis' entire manor. Really? Where is it? I'll go find it right now. Everything's okay now, Rowan. Your friends already snuck in. It's been a while, hasn't it? I can't believe how much Braddock has grown. <laughs> Peggy? What exactly are you doing here? I came to see you, of course. I went to Hollistone to find you, and the people from the Mithril Consortium told me you were attending a banquet at Lord Francis Manor tonight. This place is extremely dangerous, especially for you. Don't forget, you're the heir to the entire Mithril Consortium. Your very existence is a thorn in the side of many people here. Me? A thorn? A lot has happened ever since you decided to travel the world on your own. There's a great conspiracy brewing, Rowan, and right at its center is Lord France, the lord of this manor.
Welcome, honored guests. How may I be of service? Are you going to the banquet hall? The banquet hall is just ahead. Please enter at your earliest convenience. Once you pass through the vineyard, you should be able to see the dining area. Please forgive me, but the preparations for this area are not complete. I cannot leave my post. However, there are plenty of guards around the vineyard. Should you encounter any issues, feel free to ask for their assistance. Yes, they will be in charge of security for tonight's banquet. Rest assured, they have seen the guest list and will not trouble you in any way. To prevent any unsavory guests from entering, Lord Franz has asked the guards to record the names and appearances of every visitor before welcoming them. It's only common courtesy for us to do so. Should any unlisted persons or impostors be found on the premises, they will be swiftly removed. My pleasure. No way! It's unmistakable! The liquid is filled with corrupted magic from the ley lines! If any guests were to drink this stuff, they would completely lose their minds! After that, they would just pass out, right? No, even worse! They shall become pliable, obedient puppets! All guests in attendance are rich and powerful nobles. Lord Fran sure knows how to treat his guests, huh? Doesn't look like he invited everyone over for a night of food and fun, does it? You're the only one who would crack jokes at a time like this. But you do see it, right? Lord Franz is just using this banquet to gain control over those nobles. If all of those nobles end up as Lord Franz's puppets... No, we need to stop this before it happens. Hear that? Well, that's the sound of the dinner bell, which means the banquet is about to begin. Honored guests, the banquet will begin momentarily. Please find your seats in the hall just ahead. Lord Franz wishes to welcome everyone before the feast. Welcome, my distinguished guests, and thank you for gracing my home with your presence this evening. My name is Franz. As you can all see, these are gem vine grapes, a special variety that can only be produced in these lands. Now, allow me to present the masterpiece of tonight's banquet, our most unique brew, crafted using only the best gem vine grapes. Tonight, everyone attending the Golden Banquet will have the opportunity to savor it. At our current capacity, we can produce 20,000 casks of brew per year. More than enough to fill the goblets of every noble in the royal capital, I'm sure. Please believe me when I say this brew has the potential to add even more flavor to your lives. Oh? From what I've heard... Bad weather resulted in awful harvests across the region. Northville's wheat and Southville's gemvine grapes were both affected. 
Could it be that Merlin's ward no longer works? In the future, will you still be able to grow these gemvine grapes in Ryham? No, milady. These are just rumors. Well, y yes, that's it. Baseless, fear-mongering rumors, and, and nothing more. With the decades-long disappearance of Merlin, it's only natural that the protection over Ryham has been compromised. But I can assure you it has not affected me in the least. Hmm, perhaps so. But Southfield's output isn't nearly enough to sustain your grandiose promises. I have already spoken to the residents of Northville, my lady. They will begin sowing our grapes as soon as the weather allows. No need to worry. That jerk! I can't believe he's... Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to knock over the table. Someone bumped me. Hey! What are you doing? This is our best chance at finding out Lord Franz's motives. Who's hiding over there? It's you lot. Gods! Throw these damn curs out right now! Ah, I knew it would come to this sooner or later. Looks like our game of hide-and-seek is over. Get ready to fight. Just as I expected. I've been asking myself the same question. Who am I? A villainous murderer? Some flame-weaving witch? Or... your most loyal student? Please answer me, my dear Magister Merlin. was too? Yes. No matter what magic he used to conceal it, I was never fooled. At first, I was only suspicious. But when we fought against that wind elemental, I saw his magical array. Sorry to interrupt, Miss Muriel, but you seem aware of everything. Do you happen to know where that hypo fiend came from? You've all been lied to this entire time. Lied to by my mentor. What Merlin placed over Ryham wasn't a ward, but rather a seal. As for why this hypo fiend appeared when it did, it was pure coincidence as far as I can tell. The seal continues to weaken, and the hypo fiend used a brief lapse in the seal's power to escape. Somehow I doubt it was a coincidence. If anything, it was probably part of Dura's plan. Anyway, you must have forgotten that you placed a seal on this place long ago, right, Merlin? 
Otherwise, you would have known someone was trying to break the seal, and we wouldn't have gone through all of that trouble. The way you said that, you didn't sound surprised at all. When did you figure out who he was? Please. General Hogan would have kicked me out of the heroic order ages ago if I couldn't even figure out that much. Anyways, how was Merlin's seal broken in the first place? It couldn't just be those grapes, right? Don't underestimate those grapes, even though they're not magical. They're like ticks. Sucking the power from the earth, contaminating the ley lines, and disrupting the magical balance of the land. In doing so, they can weaken the seal. Ah, oh, does that mean the strange weather in Ryham is being caused by a magical imbalance in nature? You are a smart mage. As it stands, there is only a small break in the seal. But if you fail to repair it soon, the consequences will be unimaginable. The Hypofiend was not the only thing sealed beneath these lands. There's no telling what other sinister things are hidden underneath. <laughs> Mysterious as ever, Magister Merlin. Even now you are still unwilling to tell me more than what is necessary. I imagine it's because... I no longer exist in your memories. I've been searching for you for the last twenty years. But no matter what magic I employed, I found no trace of you. At the time, I feared that something had happened to you. I don't blame you for forgetting about me, but... It hurts all the same. I never thought you, of all people, would console me someday. You used to be so strict with me, after all. You are incredible, Lady Muriel. I have nothing but the utmost respect for you. I've never seen or heard of any other mage who could command Merlin's magic. Did Magister Merlin teach you this? Yes. Magister Merlin once said that I was his greatest student, and this was his reward for me. I'm so jealous of you. But in the end, I was forgotten by my dearest teacher. I'd rather that he never truly cared for me. I'm sure my Magister didn't want to forget you, Miss Muriel. Magister places a lot of importance on the feelings of others. It's just... a lot of things have happened lately, and you're not the only person who's been forgotten. I see. Thank you, little one. Magister Merlin, to this day, I still haven't mastered the techniques you once taught me. Even after twenty years, I still have yet to catch up to you. But for many, it is only in the coldness of solitude that a flame is finally sparked. As it stands, it looks like you no longer need me. But even if it's in the smallest of ways, just this once, could I please help you? for you any time. After all, you are my dearest. Magister Merlin. Mm. I see. I see. Merlin. I finally found you.
I heard you found evidence connecting Lord Franz to the fire in Northville. What's this mess about? I see. Lord Franz hired mages from the Adamant Syndicate to set fire to Northville, presumably to coerce them into planting grapes. He was actually using these grapes to absorb magic out of the land to weaken your... I mean, Merlin's magic seal. No need to hide it anymore, General. We all know he is the great Merlin. What? When did they find out about your real identity? Letting him pretend to be a fool is harder than saving the world. I'll explain everything in my report, but there's no need to worry. Luckily, the only people who know his true identity are all right here, General. Wait, where's Lord Franz? He fainted at the sight of the monster. So I tied him up and tossed him aside. <laughs> the Adamant Syndicate? How could a bunch of merchants break Merlin's seal? They're not ordinary merchants. We also captured an Adamant Syndicate mage back at Lord Franz's manor. I'm sure you have plenty of questions for her, right? Come with me. I'll need your help with the interrogation. Magister Merlin, the seal! Even though we defeated the Hypofiend, the grapes have already thrown the land's magic into chaos! The blizzards engulfing Ryham and Hollistone won't stop unless the seal is repaired. And if it breaks, even more Hypofiends are going to appear and attack everyone. Please let me tag along. Watching you cast spells up close is like living a dream. I'm in pure bliss. So, where exactly did you place your seal? During my investigation, I scoured all of Ryham for it. I even checked the Gruglin's lair, but found nothing. So now you finally remember your beloved student, do you? Unfortunately, to keep the seal's location as hidden as possible, you refused to let me accompany you at the time. We parted ways just outside of Ryham. As for the specific location of the seal, I can't say for sure. Then can you at least take us to the place where you parted ways, Miss Muriel? <laughs> of course. I could never forget the sight of my teacher waving goodbye to me that day. to be hiding something. The tunnel looks like it was dug by hand, but there's no way in. The entrance must have caved in during the battle just now. Wow. I can't even hear the sound of wind passing through. This tunnel's been completely warded off. Guess we'll just have to go around then. It looks like Miss Muriel was pointing us towards the heights, north of Ryham. I know a path to get there. Follow me.
Hold it right there. See this? It's the emblem of the heroic order. Now tell me who sent you. What exactly are your orders? Please have mercy. Lord Franz paid us to serve as guards. Go find our captain. He's the one carrying the contract. Only the captain knows. The rest of us lowly foot soldiers have all been assigned to the outskirts. So, money's all that matters to you guys, huh? Go tell your captain that your job here is over. You can go find work somewhere else now. What? But how can you say that? Lord Franz still hasn't paid us for this month. Uh, arrested? The news will be posted all over Hollistone tomorrow, if you don't believe me. If you still want to give your life to Lord Franz, that's your choice. Just know that you'll be doing it for free. So think about it. This way. This looks like where Lord Franz keeps his treasures. You there. Tell me about these grapes right now. Calm down. Why are you suddenly reacting so intensely? Are you the one spreading rumors about Lord Franz getting arrested? What a load. Aside from being filthy rich, the guy's got connections with nobles all over the kingdom. Do you think he'd get locked up so easily? Once they let him go, the first thing he's going to do is ask if we've done our jobs, so stay out of our business. Answer me. Did Lord Franz plant these grapes too? When were they planted? The guy who worked the previous shift says that he planted them with some woman in black. Shut your trap, idiot. Don't tell them anything else. We ain't got any reason to answer you. Now scram. Three years ago. Wasn't that before Southville planted their grapes in mass? If so, that means my hometown. But how did this happen? I have to find out. Considering they're connected to Southville's grapes, we should investigate. And if they aren't willing to talk, we'll have to try something else. Relax. I won't go too hard on them. Sorry. I must have gotten a little carried away. The truth is, I've seen similar magic in my hometown before. What? When did I tell you? Your memory is really impressive. <laughs> if only those guards were better at fighting than running away, maybe then I could have beaten a few more answers out of them. I have a theory, Magister Merlin. I'm sure you've already thought of it, but would you mind listening? Those mercenaries mentioned a woman in black appearing here alongside Lord Franz three years ago. This would have been before Southville began planting gemvine grapes. This place may be where they first tested these grapes. That's why this place ended up like this. Because gemvine grapes siphon the magic from the earth. 
You're as humble as you are wise, Magister Merlin. You guided us towards each of these clues, knowing that we would eventually figure things out. In any case, we can't let these gem vine grapes continue to spread. Otherwise, Southville will end up just like this place. I wouldn't mind lighting up the entire field if I had to. But will burning these grapevines really solve the problem? They're full of magical energy, after all. Hmm. Lady Muriel has a point. With how much power they've leached out of the land, I suspect these grapes would only regenerate if we tried to destroy them. Regenerate? Does that mean the grapes in Southville can regenerate too? Those have clearly been improved somehow. Even ordinary villagers with no magical talent would notice if sinister-looking grapes like this were planted all around them. I see. And how are we supposed to get rid of these grapes? Any ideas? Of course. After all, he is the Great Merlin. <laughs> Indeed. Even without your memories, you are still the mighty Merlin, and my ingenious teacher. clearing surrounded by runes. I think those mercenaries are guarding something over there. Stop right there, you lot! Do I have to keep saying it? Look, Lord Franz has been... I know exactly what happened to Lord Franz. Then why are you still blocking our way? Are your lives really worth the money he paid you? Or maybe he promised you riches beyond your wildest dreams if you protected this place. Because let me tell you, you are dreaming if you believe him. I don't know what we're guarding here, and I don't care to know what you're doing here. But a deal is a deal. We were paid to guard this place, and that's what we're going to do. You don't need to uphold a contract with Lord Franz, you know. He's not exactly a good person. Our honor depends on it. What kind of future will we have as mercenaries if we abandon our post simply because our client got arrested? So please, leave now, before we're forced to carry out our duties. I understand. You're not wrong for being loyal, but you placed your loyalty on the wrong person. Draw your weapons.
We fought our hardest, but it still wasn't enough. We surrender. We have no way of upholding our part of the contract in the face of overwhelming power. I will order my men to gradually retreat. Do as you wish here. He's gone. I guess he wasn't such a bad person after all. General Hogan appreciates honorable fighters like him. Maybe the Heroic Order will have use for their services someday. That must be the place where you hid the seal all those years ago. I can sense its residual magical energy. Even after years and years of being drained of its power, I can still sense the warm determination woven into its magic. It was this very magic that sparked the flames in my heart. That flame has never been extinguished, Magister. Not even once. Now go. Cast your magic as you did in the past and let its golden warmth wash over this land once more. Oh, I didn't get to memorize the incantation. Oh, would you mind doing it one more time? And that, everyone, is the power of Merlin. I can sense a faint stirring deep within the earth. A heart that should have stopped beating long ago has begun to pulse with new vitality. Does that mean the seal has been mended? Will the cold weather finally go back to normal? In a matter of days, yes. This land needs some time to heal. As the cold, stiff earth regains consciousness, warmth and vitality will return once more. Thank goodness it's finally over. We should go back and report everything to General Hogan. It looks like I'll have a lot of paperwork to do. Wait, aren't we missing someone? Where'd the rabbit go? He didn't just run off, did he? I know he's a natural escape artist, but he really helped us out. I was even going to ask General Hogan to reward him for his troubles. Yeah, we should look for him outside of camp. I just hope nothing happened to him. Oh, it's you guys. The wind is calling me. It brought me a message. It seems the situation in my homeland has become even worse. The Dark Forest. It's a sacred forest blessed by the Deer Spirit and protected by the stars themselves. It's also the place where I grew up. It used to be such a beautiful, harmonious place. But then, the corruption appeared. A filthy magic that can never be eradicated. One that grows back whenever we cut it down. Finding a way to purge the corruption is the whole reason I left my home in the first place. I've been wandering around looking for help ever since. I've spoken to a spire mage, and even a druid in a cabin, but the answer's always the same. It's as if the corruption has a life and will of its own, and refuses to be removed from our lands. So, when I heard there was a powerful mage living near Ryham, I figured I would test my luck. That's when I discovered those strange grapes. 
The magical instability in Ryham looked just like the corruption in the Dark Forest. I thought that if I followed you, I might find a way to get rid of the corruption. At first, I wasn't very hopeful. I didn't expect to come face to face with the legendary Merlin. Nor did I expect you to purge the corruption in these lands. But I saw it all for myself, with my own eyes. If anyone can save my homeland, it's the great and powerful Merlin. So please, Magister Merlin, I'm begging you. Will you deliver my home from certain doom, just like you did with Ryham? What? You're... you're the all-powerful Merlin, aren't you? Oh well. Please, save my home. Save the Dark Forest. We're back! It all went well! Chippy, you're getting too excited! Of course Magister Merlin was going to fix the seal. Right? I don't need details. It's an honor to have you here, helping Ryham. Come with me! It's time for a little celebration at the Traveler's Light. Steak, good brew, and freshly caught eels from the lake. Oh, also, here are some nuts for you to enjoy. <sighs> it's not often that the General is this generous. Unfortunately, we won't be able to enjoy this feast with you. You're not saying no to my hospitality, are you? The Dark Forest? You mean the woodlands north of Hollistone? I heard there's been trouble in that region lately. The Wilders hold dominion in those lands. Even though it's only across the river, as a magistrate of the Lightbearer Empire, I have no authority beyond Hollistone. The Wilders hold dominion in those lands. Even though it's only across the river, as a magistrate of the Lightbearer Empire, I have no authority beyond Hollistone. General, long story short, he has been invited by the Wilders to help solve a crisis that is very similar to what Ryham has gone through. So, something strange is happening over there as well. Don't worry about it. I understand that nothing is more important than the safety of the people. I'll pray to Jura for you. I hope your journey goes well, and you return safely. Magister, are you leaving without me again? Magister Merlin! Are you embarking on a new journey? I was talking to Miss Muriel about the principles of a magic circle, but I finished you were gone. Miss Muriel? Are you going with Magister Merlin? I'm sorry if I was wasting your time earlier. No need to apologize. I'm well aware that Magister Merlin is always running off to find the next disaster. Like oil and water, we can never mix. I'm destined to be without her company. Never mind. I'm used to waiting for him. At least this time you won't forget me, right, Magister? That's all I needed to hear. Magister Merlin, I'll remain here with Miss Muriel and observe the results of the seal's restoration. We'll be able to see Ryham flourish once again. Dura above, 
Wherever you may roam or stay, may your magic light the way. He's running the show. <laughs> you were able to save him, I see. Yes, my lady. My apologies. Oh. I never <laughs> intended for this eyesore to end up in your presence. I will remove him from your sight at once. <laughs> no, please. I beg you, give me one more chance. <laughs> one last chance. Mm. Yes, yes. Just one last chance. I will not disappoint you, my lady. <laughs> I hope not, for your sake. <clears throat> my lady, pardon me, but I've seen you kill for less. He did help us with our little problem, so it wasn't a total failure on his part. I'll give him one last chance. All that matters is our little experiment on the other side of the dark forest. <laughs> <laughs> 